Oh, hello. Didn't see you there. <sighs> Stephen thought. Yeah, we'll call it that. We'll call um, that. Welcome to the STEM Lab here at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis. My name is Don. And I'm Becky. And today we're going to do a quick Facebook Live science edible experiment thing. Okay. Yeah, this is science you can actually eat. Normally we say don't eat your science experiments, but this is one you get to yeah, eat. Yeah, like you, it's very hard to eat physics. Yeah, how do you eat gravity? We should stick to that. Oh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, pieces. She said what we're doing today is we're, we're going to talk about cells, the little microscopic pieces that make up every living thing. Every living thing. And we're specifically going to talk about the cells that make a plant. Plant cells. And we are gonna we're gonna turn a pizza into a plant cell, and we call it plant cell pizza. Great. Yeah, we're so creative. I know we think through these things very very much. So um, every ingredient here is gonna represent a part of a plant cell, and those parts are called organelles. Tell what an organelle is. So an organelle, they're all the individual pieces of a cell which do all the functions of the cell, tell it what to do, operate all its function. We're going to do a plant cell because they have some really cool, unique part organelles which only exist in plants. And that gives an opportunity to have more topics. Yeah, more topics. That said, we've got some topics that aren't necessarily vegetarian or vegan friendly. we got pepperoni, we got sausage, we got some cheese. You can feel free to mix your toppings and change these for anything that works to fill the niche. Exactly. Right? If you don't like some of these, or yeah, change it up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you want to get started? Yeah, so first of all, we have to have our crust. And we have specifically chosen to make our crust in a rectangle shape because of the take on a rectangle shape. And this is a pre-made crust that we baked, but you can use whatever crust you want to make it into a rectangle. Yeah. And the crust serves a very important part of our cell. It is going to be our cell wall, and that's unique to plant cells. And we're making the crust that organelle because it's going to be nice and hard and crusty. And cell walls are hard, protective layers. Exactly. And they're what make plant cells have straight edges instead of round edges. And, and that's what help keep, keeps a plant straight up and not flying. Um, next, crust. So we got crust is the cell wall. And oh, next, we're going to add something called cytoplasm, represented by our uh, official Children's Museum sauce. Not sold in stores. Not sold in stores. No, you can't Very get it. Very special. Yeah. Okay. We, like on there. We, we, we like we sauce. We discussed this earlier. We both love sauce. So. Yes, put a lot on there. And you want to spread it around. What's really important is make sure you leave a little space on the edge because we need to show that cell wall. We need that crusty right. part. Now this oh, this uh, sauce here, as we said, represents cytoplasm, which is kind of like a goop yeah. inside cells in which the other organelles float around. Excellent. Okay. And okay, before we start adding the toppings, of course, cheese. Cheese. Yeah, the cheese on pizza. And this represents something important too. This is your cell membrane. Now there's a cell wall on the outside of every plant cell, but right underneath that cell wall is a thinner, squishier, more pliable layer called a cell membrane, which are animal cells that we have also have. All cells have a cell membrane. And we know that, okay, our cheese is on top of our sauce, so we have it order a little bit wrong, and I know there are some places where they like to put the cheese under the sauce on pizza, so you can do that if you want to be more scientifically accurate. But we like our cheese on top. Yeah, we like traditional. So here we go, cell membrane. There we go. So the next organelle we're going to put on is our nucleus. And we're using pepperoni for this. And the nucleus is a really, really important organelle. This is the control center for the cell. It tells the cell what to do, what its functions are. It really it drives, it drives the whole thing. Yeah, inside the nucleus, there is a substance you may have heard of from every crime show ever called DNA. Deoxyribonucleic um, acid. Say that three times. Deoxyribonucleic acid, deoxyribonucleic acid, deoxyribonucleic acid. Thank so you. Um, my, my high school biology teacher had a dance. She did help us memorize it. That's that. I'm not going to do the dance. Right. So, um, anyway, DNA is a code, and every living thing has a unique code in its DNA. And DNA uh, codes for your cells to build something called protein. Okay, and the DNA is not the only part of this protein coding, or excuse me, protein synthesis process. 
uh, we need to have all the other parts put it together. So let's go from our nucleus to our, wait, what is this? This is our endoplasmic reticulum. reticulum. Another great word. Yeah, and this you is just call the it the ER. ER yeah. yeah. So we are using mushrooms, mushrooms. for our endoplasmic, endoplasmic reticulum. reticulum. This is kind of like a conveyor belt. Okay, so the DNA is inside the nucleus because we need to protect our DNA. If you get changes to your DNA, that's what we call mutations, and those can be pretty bad. You can get things like cancer from certain types of mutations in your DNA. So the nucleus protects it. And whenever protein needs to get made, your cell makes sure the nucleus keeps protecting the DNA by making a copy called RNA. And that RNA goes out along this endoplasmic reticulum, like I said, like a conveyor belt. Mm -hmm. So that code can be read by our next organelle. Which is the ribosomes. They're tiny, tiny little things. They float all around the cytoplasm because they have a job to do. And that job is to read an RNA code when it's time to synthesize a protein float around and find building blocks called amino acids and bring them over to the endoplasmic reticulum to link up in the order determined by the RNA. And so since our ribosomes are super small, we are just going with some herbs, some teeny tiny little pieces, this is just Italian seasoning, you can use basil, oregano, whatever yep. you want. But Put them everywhere. Anything. All over, they all are over, all over the They go all over, wherever they need to be. Okay, so there's our ribosomes. And so now we have made our protein, the ribosomes, the cell workers basically have put the protein together. It's time to ship it out to where it needs to go. And for that, we need our Golgi bodies. Here we go. Excellent. Excellent. And so these are being portrayed by red pepper slices. The Golgi bodies are like post offices in your cells. They take a finished protein. They package it up and they ship it outside of its cell of origin to whatever part of the body it needs to be to do its job. For example, if your hair is made of a protein, Golgi bodies are what allow it to actually grow up out of your head. Make that. sense? Okay, so now we're going to move over to one of the organelles that is unique to plant cells. We don't have it. We don't need it. Why don't we need it? Because we can eat. Exactly. So plants have to make their own food and they use a chemical called chlorophyll and it's green and the chlorophyll exists in the organelle the chloroplasts so we wanted something green since chlorophyll is green so we are using green olives today so the chlorophyll what it does is it takes the sun's energy and it uses it to produce sugars for the plants and those can go anywhere too like yep. the ribosomes Absolutely. they don't have a specific place they need to be but okay. they're really important to okay. Like little so. room. So oh, we that's have, right. We got a big one oh, coming we got here, a big so. organelle next. Okay, so, so. so when, once those sugars get made in the chloroplasts, they get moved over to a different organelle that turns those sugars into usable energy for the plant. The same thing happens in our bodies, except it's from the food that we eat. These are called mitochondria, played today by Italian sausage. Mito, mighty, mighty mitochondria. It's the powerhouse of the cell, you adults may remember from sixth grade. Wait, no, gotta leave that space clear. Mitochondria can go pretty much anywhere too, because all they do is they take that sugar and they turn it into a chemical storage battery called ATP until your body needs to use it for moving or thinking or digesting or literally anything you do. And so the mitochondria are in both plants and animals doing the same function, which is Sugar. Yes, okay, and finally, another plant exclusive, well, sort of, okay. Plants have really big ones of these, and our cells have little tiny ones, but this is a really important thing for plants. And this is the vacuole. So for this, we're using a big old slice of tomato. Imagine this like a giant bag of water inside every cell in a plant. Now, Becky, why do plants need extra water storage in a giant bag of water? Because plants just can't, you know, get up and walk to the drinking fountain whenever they get thirsty. They have to draw in the water from the ground. And so sometimes it drains and sometimes it doesn't, or sometimes I forget to water my plants. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. So they have to store water for when I forget to water them. So when the plants drop that water, it gets stored in the vacuoles of cells. So that's why when your plants are looking a little droopy because you haven't watered them, it's because those vacuoles are getting a little this bit empty. This is really well watered. I can't even make it droop. Oh, 
all sorts of stuff. Anyway. So we chose a really big slice of tomato because this is a great, healthy plant that has lots of mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, if you looked at plant cells under microscopes and they were really healthy, you'd see just the, the vacuum will shove it all yeah, over other organelles out of the way. Uh, and you know, in animal cells, that nucleus is right dead center a lot of times on plant cells. It's yeah, everything. Push right. out to the side and make room for that extra water. Okay, well, I, so you want to cook this? I think so. I think we're ready to go. All right. So. Now, um, we don't have an oven in this step. No. Luckily, however, through the power of science, here, you want to move that out of the way. Oh, put that in the oven. We have one that, it's not really the power of science, we just baked it. We just baked it. So, there it is. Okay, this is our plant cell pizza. Let me hold it up here. We have central vacuole. Uh, we have nucleus. It's, everything's kind of flipping around. Sorry about that. Endoplasmic reticulum, cheese cell membrane, crust cell wall, chloroplast, and the ribosome sprinkle all over the place, and mitochondria, and the sauces, the cytoplasm that everything floats around. Did I miss anything? Did we get the nucleus? Nucleus. nucleus. That pepperoni okay. nucleus. It's I think we're good. Slipping off. I think we are. Well, no, we're not good yet because we haven't eaten. Oh, this has made me so hungry. I think we need to try everything. The so, best part of cooking any pizza is oh, the yeah. eating of the pizza. Yeah, so like we said, you can make your pizza however you like with your toppings, but just mm -hmm. definitely check out the diagram that we have on the museum's website for, for your directions on how you can make. Pizza. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. I was going to take that. Okay, you have a Golgi body. Did you wash your hands? No. Oh. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take it. Okay, you take the Golgi body. Oh, Golgi body. Oh, I, I want the nucleus. Oh, excellent. Man, this looks so good. Mm. This is very sloppy. Mm. This is good. Is it melting? It's really hard to do a Facebook Live. My mom told me not to eat one. I'm chewing. So I may have to. Well, you know. Moms aren't always right. This is true. Just usually. This is true. Well, we want to say thanks for joining us here in the STEM lab. If you're ever at the Children's Museum, definitely stop by and see us up in STEM lab or the fourth floor inside Science Works. We do tons of really interesting science experiments up here, and we'd love to see you and hang out with us. And make sure to click the link to see the recipe oh, yeah. for to make us a pizza like this one, and uh, like and subscribe. Yeah. Please. All right.